Hi, this is a quick tutorial to show you how you can use Nearsoft's Control My Monitor to easily switch between your inputs of your monitor as well as do other things uh, automatically with your monitor. So in my case, um, what I wanted to do is I have a monitor that I have both my PC and my Nintendo Switch connected to. And I wanted to have simple icons that I can double click to switch the input. Instead of always having to reach around the monitor, find the input button, press it, figure out which input corresponds to which. I literally just go down here, double click switch. It switches to show my Nintendo Switch. And then when I want, once I want to switch back to my PC, I double click PC. Now, one thing to keep in mind, once you're looking at your switch, obviously this, the, like what you're seeing right now is my main display. I can't actually see the PC icon anymore. So in my case, I have two screens. I keep these on my second screen. So when, once I'm looking at the switch on my first screen, my main screen, I can use the second screen to click on the PC icon and switch back. Uh, so yeah, let's get started on how to set all of that up. So Nearsoft Control and Monitor, as far as I understand, uh, what this program does is it lets you control your monitor the same way you can control it through the menu, just using the software. So you don't actually have to use the um, inputs on the back of your monitor, you can use the software to control certain things. I'm not sure which monitors this works with. I'm using an ASUS uh, monitor, uh, like a gaming oriented ASUS monitor, and it seems to work for me. It might work for you, it might not. So just give it a try. Uh, search for Nearsoft Control My Monitor. Once you're looking at this beautiful old website, um, you know you're in the right place. Scroll all the way down, find this hidden button in the center. Uh, not hidden, just easy to miss. Uh, click on that, download it. So what this does is it uh, downloads a zip file. I already downloaded it a bunch of times today just for testing. Um, so what is this? It's a zip file. It's not going to install automatically into your programs uh, directory. Instead, what you have to do is right click on it, extract all or unzip. You can also use WinRAR or other software. Also, by the way, all of what I'm about to go into is for Windows. I'm not sure. I don't think this would work on Mac. Uh, should have probably mentioned that in the beginning, but yeah. Uh, okay, so control my monitor. That is the program that we were looking at earlier online. Um, looks about the same here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is close this and move it to a place where we actually want to keep it. So this whole folder, control my monitor, um, I'm going to cut. So uh, right click, cut. And I'm going to go to, in my case, I have a tools folder so I'm, i would go i would go to c that's what i would recommend is go to c uh, you could either do program files or in my case i already have a tools folder where i install similar types of programs um right i can't paste it here because i already have it installed so i'm just going to go into the the folder that i already had here uh, this is what it should look like once you've moved it to the directory you want to actually keep it at um, so if you're looking at that uh, place again make sure this is where you actually want to keep it and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new folder here called tutorial. Call it whatever you want to call it, um, but this is where your custom files are going to go. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this program again. So in this program, I'm just going to quickly cover the basics. I actually don't know too much about it. All I know that's important for me is up here, I can select the monitor. So display one is the main monitor I want to look at and switch the input off. And then I can look at the different uh, properties I can change. And if I look at this one right here, property number 60 is input select. It lets me read and write so I can both see what is the current input and I can tell it to switch the input. So uh, for this to work, you should see input select or something similar to input select and it should have read and write access. Uh, you might not see input select, you might not have write access. If either of those are the case, then I believe this approach might not work for you. Um, okay, so in my case, the current value for my input is 15, and I can see possible values are 0, 17, 18, and 15. So um, now one last thing is I can double click this, and I can enter the new value I want to use. Um, and so what I did is I basically just tried all of these values, and through trial and error, I figured out which value corresponds to which input. And um, once you know that, you're basically done in here, but just keep it open. We're going to go into the folder that we created earlier. You're going to right click, new text document, call it the device you want to switch to. So I'm going to call it um, switch. 
as in Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm gonna just click on, oops, nope. So that uh, opened up in VS Code on my end because it's uh, I, it's a text editor that I have, but you might not have that. So I'm gonna use Notepad. That's the one that everyone has. And I just switched my monitor, which I didn't want to do. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Let's close everything. There we go, so it's just empty. Okay, so this is what you should see. It's your empty text file in your text editor. We're gonna go ahead and change the file type. That's the first thing we need to do. Right now it's a text file. We don't want it to be a text file. We want it to be a bat, uh, batch file. I'm not quite sure what these are, but I believe they're like very basic uh, program files that you can have on Windows. Uh, so switch. Um, basically this is the text file and this is the batch file. This might look, the icons might look different for you. Like this icon right here is for VS Code. All, I, I believe this one should look similar though. Like this should have this look of like um, gears going together. So delete the original file that we had, the text file. We don't need that anymore. And then just looking at the batch file here, um, what we're gonna do is, I would just suggest you to copy paste what I've put below this um, video tutorial. In my case, I'm just going to copy paste from my old values. There we go. Okay, so what did I copy paste here? Um, first line, what this does is it tells batch to go into the correct directory. So what that means is um, when you're executing this program, the batch file, it can execute programs in different directories and we need it to use the control my monitor program. So first we need to tell to go into this folder where we've put control my monitor. So that's why it's important that you pick a good place to put it because you shouldn't move it after that. Otherwise this program won't work anymore. Um, and then once you once you know where it is, you can either just click up here and copy that or you can click in here, properties, uh, click on any of these really, go onto their properties and then you'll see the location right here and you can copy that. Uh, control copy, um, copies that. I can go back here and paste it there. So CD, go to C. So again, what this means is CD is change directory. So go to C, tools, control and monitor into this folder, basically. That's the first line, we're done here. Second line, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run control my monitor dot X. Um, that's the executable file right here. And then, uh, to know exactly what we should run here, I would suggest that you go back to control my monitor. And first of all, make sure display monitor zero. This should match what you're seeing up here. I'm not sure if this will match for you. This might be different for you. So just make sure that this string right here matches the actual monitor that you're trying to use. Then this number here, right here should match the, um, the 60 that you're seeing on the left here. So that the number that you're seeing next to your input selector. On your monitor, this might be a different number than on my monitor. Just make sure it matches that number. And then 15, this is the actual magic. That's the number of the input uh, selection that we want to switch to. So when I said to you know go in here and try to figure out which number corresponds to which device, now is where you want to use that knowledge that you've gained to put the right number. Uh, so in my case, I figured out 15 corresponds to my PC, and I believe it was 18. Let me check again. 18. 18 corresponds to my switch. Oops, I should not have closed that. 18 corresponds to my switch. Yeah, I know you can't run right now. Uh, edit a notepad. Okay. So uh, put the number here for your first device and then copy that, paste it, rename it to the second device, in my case, PC. Uh, go back to edit in a notepad. Oh, I forgot to save earlier, so this ended up empty. Uh, I thought it would be pre-filled, okay, never mind. But yeah, just make sure basically like both of these batch files should have the same code in them. And then for the second one, we just wanna switch the number to 18. Uh, or actually, sorry, I believe I have it the wrong way around. You can also change this later. Okay, PC is 15, switch is 18. Again, this will uh, probably be different for you. Okay, so now just by clicking on these, 
Uh, I'm just going to move this. Uh, I'm going to move this to my second screen. You're not going to see it, but I'm just going to quickly test here. Yeah, so I, I double click switch and I'm seeing my monitor switch to the switch input and then I'll double click PC and it should switch back. You're probably still seeing my screen right now, but I'm not seeing it. Come on, switch back. There we go. Okay. So I've tested and confirmed it works. Uh, just go ahead, test yourself that it works. And then the last step that I would suggest, uh, like at this point, the tutorial is basically over. Uh, you could just copy these onto your uh, uh, desktop and just keep them there and click on them. In my case, what I've done is I've created shortcuts. It's a little bit more elegant because you can set icons and everything easily and move them around. Uh, so to do that, what you're going to do is right click on it. On Windows 11, you have to go on show more options and you're going to say send to desktop. And if you minimize, you can find this new shortcut right here. I'm just going to cut that and move it back here. Um, so this shortcut, I'm not going to do it for both, but I'm just going to show you quickly what I've done here myself. This shortcut to make it look extra pretty, what you can do is you can create your custom uh, fab icon. So fab icons are um, icons on Windows for your shortcuts uh, and also sh icons for other things, but that's what is relevant, relevant for here. Um, there's a website called ICO Converter. If you just Google that ICO Converter, um, you should find this website and it lets you upload any image file. Um, so what I did is I found images that uh, were good icons for my two devices. Um, maybe I should have picked a different one for my PC. I just picked an image off the monitor. So maybe you can do that better than I did there, but basically find images that represent the device you want to switch to, upload them here, convert it, download that. And then uh, what you can do is with your shortcut from earlier, you can right click on that, go into properties. And then let me just quickly see where it is. Change icon. The file contains no icon. Yeah, you should probably be able to set the path up here. I'm actually just gonna go back to the one where I already did it and um, make sure I'm actually giving the right instructions here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically right click on your file, your shortcut file, um, and then, yeah, yeah. Uh, change icon and then enter the uh, path that you used earlier. Actually, in my case, I used system drive. Okay, so this might depend slightly. I don't really know for sure what this will look like on your uh, device. Probably it's best to just use browse here. Uh, yeah, it seems to work best. Let's just click on browse and then you should be able to find this. Uh, find the icon file that you generated earlier. And that's basically how you get that full final little bit of magic of having these specific icons that correspond to uh, the correct commands. Um, but yeah, so just to recap everything, uh, the main piece here is you have to download Nearsoft's Control My Monitor. Um, you need to move that to a directory where you just want to keep it permanently um, because it does not automatically install into program files. Uh, you need to figure out uh, what the right monitor is in here, what the right input selector is, and what the possible values for that are. And then in your batch file, I'll just have this open again here. Um, you want to use those values that you found to make sure you're using the right monitor, you're selecting the input, and then you're assigning the correct value to the input. 